Hey, what's up guys? Sam here. And I'll be doing the free video for Friday, August 25th, 2023. So just uh, finished making the premium video for the folks in the gold room. And uh, we looked at uh, what we usually look at. You know, we look at every index. Uh, we try to look at some bonds. We look at dollar. We try to put all the pieces together, make sense of things. And then kind of get a top-down point of view on the market so that we can be prepared for next week and really take some good action. Um, but what I want to do with you guys here on the YouTube is just uh, give you... Hmm, I'm going to give you three levels on three different things. I might give you two bonus ones, but three that you definitely need to know. And here's what I'm going to ask that you do. That way you don't have to be in front of your screens for any of this. Once I give you the levels, just jot those down. Put, put them down on an actual piece of paper. Make some, uh, make some connection there between your brain and your body as you write these down. And, uh, and then once you've written them down, go into your platform and leave an alert. Leave an alert so on, on both ends um, of the levels. And, uh, and then make sure that you get a text message or an email. And then that way, you know, you'll, uh, you can't miss it if something happens. Um, so one thing that I was noticing while going, while making the video for the premium room is uh, that we're just basically in a kind of a giant trading range here. Um, regardless of what you look at, we're just kind of in a big trading range at this point. You know, if you look at price here, basically since June, we're at the exact same price that we're at in June. Um, so the levels here that I'm going to give you here on SPY is... Uh, 451.76 as the top end. The way that I got these levels, if you just want to reverse engineer the thing, run this Fibonacci from the high to the bear market low, and this will be the 786 level, right? You can see that there on the screen. The second level I'm going to give you is even more important. It's the 618, and then uh, that'll be the same for all the levels uh, as we go across the different tickers. So your resistance here in the box, right? We're based, so let, let me just clarify this. 451.76 is the top of your box. 429.81 is the bottom of your box. And as long as we're in there, you know, I just consider this a very, very large trading range, right? It's basically about 200 SPX points, which is pretty big. Um, so the strategy for trading a box is completely different than the strategy than trading a trend, right? When you're trading a trend, and something looks like this and it's going up and then it consolidates for a little bit you expect that it you know it'll continue in the direction of the trend that brought you into the consolidation right and that's completely fair and that's the way you should trade it same thing with a downtrend right if you're trading in a downtrend you go into a consolidation you should expect that it breaks in the direction of the predominant trend um, but when you're trading in a box and you're trading like this, you shouldn't expect breakouts or breakdowns. Eventually you will get one, right? Obviously we won't, we won't be in this box forever. Um, but you just trade, you change your strategy, right? So when you're trading in a box, you want to be looking to sell the top of the box and you want to be looking to uh, buy the bottom of the box until something changes. And, um, and also from, from a strategy perspective, you want to shrink your time frames, right? You want to shrink your time frames so that you know if you're used, if you're used to trading a daily chart, um, you would transition to trading an hourly chart, and you would do exactly the same thing you would on a daily chart. You would just do it on a faster hourly chart. Why? Because when you're in a trading range, you can't count on the move sticking, right? So, for example, um, you know, even just today, uh, you know, if you would have shorted uh, 43.60 on SPX, because we're in a near-term downtrend, the day closed 45 points in your face. Now, on Monday, you know, we might be right back down and you might be back to break even. And then on Tuesday, we might be back up and you'll be down 30 points, right? So it, it, until we get a firmer direction under the market um, on a daily time frame, shrink your time frames, be in and out of trades faster, don't look to trade breakouts, don't look to trade breakdowns, buy the top uh, sell the top of the range by the bottom of the range and uh, and just know your levels so 451.76 429.81 to the bottom I do a well, full disclosure I do think that we're going here I do think that we have a date with destiny there and that date is going to happen right around 414 415 right uh, this is the VWAP the magenta line VWAP for the year that's a very important level it has not been tested uh, this is the daily 200 of equally large level and this is the 50% retracement of the entire move so regardless of how you look at it this is a very meaty spot
where I do think eventually we will go. The only question is, you know, do we chop around like this and then do this? Uh, you know, is Monday Black Monday and we just drill? Um, do we then go up here to 450.176, which I would be an active short of. I would love that. And then come here. That's that's the tricky part, but we don't have to answer that, right? The only thing that we have to do is just know our levels, know our strategy, control our risk, and uh, and let the days come as they may. So let's jump over to the QQQ. And also keep in mind, you know, these levels apply to anything. So like, I wouldn't be buying uh, NVIDIA if the Qs are at the top of their range. I wouldn't be shorting NVIDIA if the Qs are at the bottom of the range. Um, you don't have to do this in the indexes, but keep in mind the indexes will predominantly control the direction of your stock. So same conversation, so we don't have to have it all over again with the Qs. Um, the level here would be 75.66, and then on the bottom end, 349.71, right? Keeps it pretty simple, um, just a big fat trading range there, about 25 points. You do have some active sell signals, but again, until further notice, we are just in a box there, so just know your levels. And then I'm gonna jump over to IWM. With IWM, I'm gonna give you one single level, and it's extremely simple. And, it, and frankly, <laughs> let's say you choose to ignore the first two that I gave you, you really shouldn't ignore this one. Because it's very simple, it's a single number, and, uh, and you'll see why here in just a second. So on the IWM, Obviously, we're not in a trend here, right? This is this is a <laughs> it's a giant sine wave on the weekly chart, um, but the level here is going to be today's low on the on the IWM. Easy enough, right? Today's low. The reason is not only because it's today's low, but because you see this red line here. That's the daily 200. You see the magenta dotted line. That's the VWAP for the year. You see what happened back here when those two levels coincided. Boom, you get a giant move, right? Look back here. When the VWAP broke, boom, you got a giant crash. So this is a very important level. You can shortcut it just by using today's low on the IWM. I would leave an alert there. And the reason that that level is so important is if we have a daily close below today's low on the IWM, look at the chart. What do you see underneath it? Well, I see a support line down here. but look at the empty space here between these two points. So basically, in the event that this were to break a close below today's low on the IWM, you're gonna get a basic, basically a free fall, somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight to 9% back to the lows. So it's a very critical level as well that needs to hold. So just leave an alert there on your charts and um, this isn't where I would wanna be trading. I wouldn't wanna be trading the IWM. I think if you're gonna be trading here, I think the SPY and the Qs are the way to go. But the IWM is just so clean in terms of its uh, signal, um, which hasn't triggered, right? And, you know, you can see there it's still above the line, um, but it's just so clean and it's so dramatic and important uh, that you can really just shortcut it with that. So I'll go ahead and wrap the video there, guys. I don't have uh, too much more um, to give you other than, uh, than those levels. And then the strategy to employ uh, when you are in a trading range, right? So just uh, sh shift your perspective away from uh, the trend perspective, which is buy every pullback to the 21, look for the breakout, uh, and instead, and this would be done on a daily time frame when you have trend, and instead shorten your time frame potentially from a daily to an hourly or from an hourly even to a 15 minute. Um, be willing to sell the top of the range, be willing to buy the bottom of the range, and uh, and also don't overcommit to breakouts or breakdowns until one of these levels is triggered either to the upside or to the downside. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, that's my time. Uh, before you go somewhere else on the YouTube, make sure you drop us a like. It takes you one second, and it certainly helps us with the algorithm. So we would definitely appreciate it. And uh, we'll come back next week, see how everything's shaping up, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Have a great Friday, great weekend. Catch you back here next Friday. Cheers. Hey traders, this is Sam with Simpler Trading. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you found the information in it helpful. If you did, leave us a like, leave us a comment. It really does help us out with the algorithm. And if you want to see us trade live with our own real money and be part of the community, come and check us out at simplertrading.com.